Hi, this is the first video of Chapter 5, General Equilibrium and Economic Efficiency. In this video, we are going to talk about Partial Equilibrium versus General Equilibrium. And this chapter is going to close the course. So until now, we have studied individual markets in isolation, but markets are often interdependent. This means that conditions in one market can affect the prices and the outputs in other, either because one good can be an input to the production of another good, or because two goods are substitutes or they can be complements. Then so far, our discussion of market behavior have been largely based on partial equilibrium analysis. When determining the equilibrium prices and the quantities in the market, we were presuming that the activity in that market had little or no effect on the other markets. However, a, a partial equilibrium analysis of this sort is sufficient to understand market behavior, but we must, we must also pay attention to the market interrelationships. Unlike the partial equilibrium analysis, general equilibrium analysis is going to determine the prices and the quantities in all markets simultaneously. So we, if we talk about partial equilibrium analysis, we can talk about only the equilibrium in the market of clothes or only the equilibrium that we find in the market of food. Or then we can talk about the equilibrium in the market of oil independently from the equilibrium in the market of gas. However, we know that these two markets, for example, can be interrelated. They can be interdependent. So when the price of oil has a, a change, it changes, it increases or decreases, it, this is going to have an effect in the price of gas and in the quantity that we uh, exchange in this market in equilibrium. Then, general equilibrium analysis is going to determine, as I have said, the price and the quantity in all markets at the same time, simultaneously and it explicitly takes feedback effects into account. But what are feedback effects? Feedback effects is a price or quantity adjustment in one market that is caused by price and quantity as adjustments in related markets. For example, let's suppose that, for example, the Spanish government taxes all imports. So the government is going to impose a tax on oil imports. This is going to immediately shift the supply curve for oil to the left because the foreign oil is more expensive and it's going to raise, it's going to increase the price of oil. But the effect of this tax is not going to end there. The higher price of oil is going to increase the demand for and then the price of uh, natural gas, for example. And the higher the natural gas price will in turn cause oil demand to rise, shift to the right and increase the oil price even more. So the oil and the natural gas markets will continue to interact until eventually an equilibrium will be reached in, will, in which the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied were equated to both markets. So in practice, a complete general equilibrium analysis that is going to evaluate the effects of a change in one market on all the other markets is not feasible. Instead, we confine ourselves to two or three markets that are closely related. For example, when we look at a tax on oil, we might also look at markets for natural gas or for coal or for electricity, for example, that are substitutes of oil sometimes. Then, to reach the uh, general equilibrium prices and quantities, we will see that we must find two prices that equate quantity demanded and quantity supplied in all related markets. If we have two markets to simplify, we will need to find the solution to four equations. So we will simplify again and we will just uh, see the relationship between two different markets. And that's all for the moment. See you in the next video.